Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a wonderful testimony to share with you, and I just find it amazing, and I hope you will too, and I hope you'll be blessed by it. And um, anyway, let me just go ahead and read this. It came in my email. Now, this sister has asked me to keep her name out of it, which is fine, because I know a lot of you are our private people. And she also sent me a picture, um, which I don't know if there's any way I could use this as a snapshot, but I will describe it. It looks like a fire in the sky, which that part, was visible to her naked eye. So she got her camera out and she took, well, her phone, I think this is on her, I believe it did say, yeah, T-Mobile. All right, so she took a picture of this, this cloud-like formation that looked like fire in the sky. And what came out, brothers and sisters, is what appears to be angelic beings. There's one, two, three. That one's wings are clearly out. That's three, four. I think that would be five. Up here would be six. That would be seven. That would be eight. Now, also in the picture, there's what looks to be black dots. She called them orbs. Now, I don't know what those are, but there's one over here with no, what I would call an angelic being around it. But over here on the right is one right in front of one of these angelic looking beings. There's one over here. Oh, that's another one. I didn't count this one. There's an orb in front of this one that's sort of in the very middle. And right in front, you could tell it's to the front, looks like it could be either Jesus or a special, like, general uh, angelic being. Now, if you didn't know already... Uh, just like with Satan's bunch, the angelic good angels also fall, like, think of Jesus as the president, and then you've got your top generals there over each country, possibly more, maybe one over North Africa, one over North, South Africa. They're, they're assigned territories. Under them could be a hundred, just like battalions. And then under them could be a thousand under each of them. And then a thousand under each of them. See, it's just like an army. So anyway, this figure in gold that showed up on film, not with her naked eye. This all showed up on film. It's amazing. But anyway... Uh, she asked me what I thought about it, and I, and I said, looks like it could be a spiritual war going on, and, um, or she might have suggested it that, and I said, I, I might have agreed, but anyway, well, I said, this is amazing that so much showed up on the camera or picture, but you only saw fire? Wow, yeah, I would say it could be spiritual warfare going on. So she must have said it first. The white objects look like angels, don't you think? I'm not sure the black orbs. I do see black dots here and there. Can you get a print? Okay, so anyway, then she comes back and she says this. I absolutely think they look like angels as well. My husband and his aunt were amazed as well. Yes, I only saw the fire-looking thing in the sky. I got a good feeling from the flame. I was thinking spiritual warfare as well. About two days ago, a day before this happened, 
I prayed for my community that God would bind whatever witches are working here and send the demon, goons, and mobs packing. I said to God in my prayer, Why can't I pray in tongues? You have me intercede at times. I do not want the enemy to hear me. And it just started coming out. I don't know if I can speak in tongues whenever I want, but I did for the first time ever. What is stranger? Now listen to this. Is before all of this happened, I had a dream the night before that I was in the ocean or sea and it was calm and I was by this little bubbling tide pool and I was putting my hand in the tide pool and I was pulling out little sea creatures and letting them go. I do not remember any animal I had pulled out of the tide pool other than I knew that's what I was doing on the last creature I pulled out I think that's right let's see did I leave out a line I was in the ocean or sea it was calm and I was by this little bubbling tide pool. I was putting my hand in the tide pool. And I was pulling out little sea creatures and letting them go. I do not remember any animal I had pulled out of the tide pool. Other than I knew that's what I was doing. Maybe they were something she couldn't identify perhaps is what she means. But on the last creature I pulled out, I pulled out a green frog. Not thinking anything of it at first, I let the green frog go. But then I thought about it for some reason and I picked up I picked up the green frog and I held it in my hand and looked at it closely. I got an uneasy feeling, so I let it go again, but then it came back to me and started to climb up on me. As it was climbing up me, I was trying to push it off of me. Dreaming of frogs, especially green ones, has to do with deceit and it's demonic. After this had happened, I had realized the deep water around me, which has to do with or symbolize God's glory. Parentheses. Stranger about all of this is I never knew how to interpret dreams until I asked for it. I am still learning, but Holy Spirit is teaching me. Close parentheses. Thinking of the unknown in the deep water, like sharks, I thought to myself, I need to find dolphins. They will be able to help me. So I swam to find dolphins, and I found them. Dolphins have to do with help and the Holy Spirit or... God's people, close parentheses. My husband was in the bathtub, so I went to talk to him in the bathroom. The whole day before this dream, I had a knot in my throat. And as I'm telling him about the dream, every single time I start to talk about the frog, the knot would get tighter and I would gag. It got to the point where not only myself, but my husband started to realize it was spiritual. So he starts rebuking it in Jesus' name. 
and telling it to come out. And each time he rebukes telling it to come out, I'm gagging. He was so worried we called his aunt. She was able to confirm by what Holy Spirit told her that God was cleansing me and I was being delivered from a demon. He was purifying me and making me a clean vessel. As she was praying, I was puking this thing up. She said, sorry, too much information. But no, actually, I'm glad you said that because this is one of the evidences that the demon is coming out. You will either vomit or you will cough really bad or you will scream. Very rarely is there no evidence that a demon has come out. If not, then you wonder, did it come out? Just like when you get completely filled with the Holy Spirit, you should speak in tongues. But let me go on, because she's been praying for that for a long time. Let me tell you how she got it. All right. Which she already mentioned, but now she's gone back in time to tell you about these events. Okay. Where was I? So, sorry, too much information, but it's true. Close parentheses. She was speaking in tongues on the phone and praying and everything, and she asked for me as well to receive tongues. What I find interesting is a while back I had a vision of hyssop. It's supposed to do with purification. Right. The, the Hebrews took the hyssop, dipped it in the lamb's blood, if I'm not mistaken, and, and painted the doorposts and the lentil with it. I'm pretty sure that was hyssop. So that was cleansing their home. From the angel of death. Okay. It's supposed to do with purification. I have asked for the gift of tongues for the longest time. After this wonderful deliverance. I heard in my spirit three days. I had no idea why I was told that. But on the third day is when I interceded for my community and spoke tongues for the first time ever. Whatever that frog was, it was hindering me. I told my husband, I never want to hear that term. Do you have a frog in your throat ever again? God is amazing, and I give him all of the glory. It was hard and exhausting because every time the enemy is being forced to let go, it tries to tighten its grip. But what I learned is persistence is key because no matter what, it has to go. So... <sighs> From what I know of this sister of ours, she was already a good and holy person, just like I had become, well, actually, I repented of all uh, sins of the flesh right shortly after I married my third husband, when I realized I don't need a man. I need God. Anyway. Um, so I left him years later. And I start fasting and praying. And asking to be used. And two years later. He starts giving me messages. Had he not. I would have never got on YouTube. I never would have had a channel. I would not have just thought of, oh, I'm going to get on YouTube and make my own channel and just, I'll just do Bible studies or something. You know, if you're not called by God, you know, you're 
especially me with my brain, I would be floundering. I wouldn't be here. I would not be here. I know that. But the point is, I had demons. I had demons. And I did not get delivered until after he started giving me messages. Now notice, she had already received the gift of interpreting dreams. That's no small dream. That's not no small gift. See, the Lord understands. And uh, he understands where those things have come from. And sometimes they come in us rather innocently. Things that we do that we don't realize are opening doors to demons. So anyway, it's because of one of my very first subscribers, Born for Battle Chris. If any of you watch Born for Battle, I think it's Born for Battle, all spelled out, 74. Born for Battle 74. I think that's right. His name is Chris, and he was one of my very first subscribers, and he was the one that said, Have you ever considered that your illness could be demonic? And you should watch Derek Prince and his self-deliverance videos. And I thanked him for that. Now, before the mention of things being demonic, I was always like, God, can a demon really reside where the Holy Spirit resides? And and I wasn't sinning anymore. And I thought, I just, I just don't believe it, you know. Especially after I'd gone to a deliverance conference. My kids were being delivered. I wasn't being delivered of anything. Anyway, that wasn't for me. It wasn't my time, I guess. The Lord has everything in His timing, okay? We have to be ready to receive it. We have to be broken down and humbled to the point where we are finally able to accept the fact that maybe some of our problems are demonic, even though it's not being caused by sin. Well, so I got delivered of my demons and one came out me coughing my head off. One came out, uh, one I wasn't sure of because I really didn't have a manifestation. So I just kind of thought that since I got rid of Jezebel, Ahab must have went too. You can look up what those demons cause you to do and then you'll realize what the manifestation was. And the, the spirit of masturbation, your fingers, if you shake your fingers, that's it coming out through your fingers. That was the last one to go, believe it or not. So, see, s sexual demons are, you can repent, you can be forgiven, but that you might still be carrying around the root, okay? The demon that caused it all in the first place. Even though you are now fully committed, you're not sinning, you're not doing that anymore. You may be gifted in many ways, or at least in some ways, but you may still have uh, something that needs to go to be completely cleaned, a clean vessel. Um, so he, he did that for her for a reason. So anyway, that's not to scare anybody into thinking you're going to be left behind. But if you're having problems of some sort, you might want to consider this so that you can be free of it. Okay. Our God is merciful and he knows where our, uh, curses, family curses, and so forth come from. He knows. And um, if you're living for him now, I don't, I'm in no way saying 
that if you have one and you don't get rid of it, you're not going to be raptured. I'm in no way saying that. I'm saying that your life might be easier and you might actually get to speak in tongues yourself if you get rid of your demon, if you have one. Many, many Christians do. In fact, Derek Prince says most all of us do or did till we got rid of them. Okay, I'm going to end this one here. And um, I'm thinking I got something else work cooking <laughs> that I'm probably going to do later after my nap because I'm getting tired and I want to do it well. Okay, so if the Lord will help me with it, I will will do it. Okay, so I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you, all your devices and internet connections and over my computer as well. I plead the blood of Jesus over my computer so we can all stay connected until we're out of here. Okay, don't let this subject cause you to not get the freedom you deserve, okay? Because you don't believe that a Christian can have a demon. Oh, yes, you can. All right, I'll end it there. I'll talk to you later.